Hi, so welcome back again to the YouTube channel. First and foremost, if you want, as always, like, subscribe. I know how this uh, people beg for them likes and subscribes. I'm not really out here to beg. But um, again, the reason being is because I'm not looking for the monetization of YouTube. I'm just here just giving free uh, promotional tips. And it gives you an insight about, again, um, how I train and the thought processes. Uh, so today uh, we're at the nice venue of uh, Peak Club. Um, so I thought I'd change the environment for you. I could obviously easily stay inside of my gym, but uh, I chose to change up the environment to give you a different look. Now today, um, uh, it's similar to sort of the protocol that you see on my first ever session you've seen. Um, and it's where I'm going to be warming up. Um, but the warm ups are going to be a little bit different just to give you an idea of a different approach to a warm up. Um, and then we're going to be doing uh, snatch pulls. Now, because I've been uh, injured for about six months, uh, I've had to modify doing snatches, barbell snatches, uh, to just uh, working around it, just make sure that I'm still progressing in, in that training. But I cannot actually feel comfortable or confident to go overhead. And then uh, what I will be doing with that is uh, supersetting that with uh, pull-ups. So just to make sure that um, while I'm not getting any, any overhead work from the snatches, I'm actually doing some sort of overhead work through hanging and pulling. So, and then what we're gonna be doing is then finishing off with the one to fives on deadlifts and dips with the rings, dip, ring dips and deadlifts. And then we're gonna be finishing the final conditioning part with kettlebell snatches and then finishing off with cool down. This one's gonna be a different approach to the workout. I mean, the video, we're gonna try and make it nice and fast and fun. But um, there will be moments where I will explain again uh, what I'm doing and sort of educational tips and cues that you may need to be aware of on your own training. So without me talking too much, let's get into it. So um, what we're going to do because of one of my uh, weak points is uh, my ankles, uh, especially when I broke it many, many years ago, I've got to try and get it. I need to get back into uh, my goal for this year is to get into an Asian squat. I want to be trying to dedicate 12 months to really naturally letting these ankles uh, be able to dorsi, dorsi plantar flexion, meaning flex easily. At the minute, it's really so tight. So I spend a little bit of time on this. So what I do is I'm um, trying to open up. Uh, so inversion, eversion. Uh, my ankles so that I can really get my ankles working in different angles. Now, it's something really big I regret about my training and my lifestyle because as soon as I got this injury, when I broke my ankle, it, I thought my me playing football was over for one thing, but at the same time, I didn't really respect the sort of recovery and the rehab that goes into getting back to football. So I was always constantly always worried about um, getting injured on the pitch, but there was never the rehab of rehabbing the ankle, rehabbing the mind. It was me just thinking, am I ready to play? And then that was it. So something very important that someone, everyone should remember is a good line I recommend is, um, don't use the sport to get fit. Um, um, don't use the sport to get fit, be fit for the sport. So you basically don't just go and say you want to play tennis today and then um, as, and then start whacking things and get injured from it because your body's not used to those kind of movements as an example. So again, I'll just do both legs, but really it's the left one that I know is the one that really gives me the biggest problem. So it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of patience. So I'm just trying to flex the knee over the toe while putting pressure through the ankle. And again, I, you probably can see how tight this one is compared to the other. So I'm only going to spend about two minutes on this and then we're going to go into scapular pull-ups. Again, uh, strengthening my shoulder blade, uh, rotator cuffs, grip. And we'll 
jump into it. So those scat pull-ups is just being able to move through the shoulder blades. We're going to do five reps. Obviously when I'm resting, I'm not going to be doing or can do some ankle bits while I'm resting to do maybe two or three sets. So I always go for that killing two stones at once approach. That's a burner. <laughs> so a lot of times you'll see when even when I'm training clients, you'll see that they can't actually do that. They end up trying to they can't move through their shoulder blades. And it's quite it's quite a good skill that most people should really improve on doing. Uh, good people that you should really follow is calisthenics kind of uh, athletes because obviously they do like that the flag uh, where they're basically holding the bar and their legs are nice and straight. Again, that requires a lot of scapular retraction and a tight, strong back. So this will be the last one. Ooh. Right, good. So the next part is preparing us for the snatches. Something that I quite like doing just to help me learn how to keep the bar close to my body when I'm, when I'm standing up. So I'm basically in this position, I've got the tension. I don't really wanna be using too much of my palms. I wanna be using my lats as much as I can learning how to use my lats engaged as I learn how to meet that contact point every time. Ooh. Good. So again, I'll just do about three to five reps. Because of the band is really pulling, I don't really need to be trying to exhaust myself so much. As long as I can feel my lats are working rather than my triceps or uh, per se biceps as much. And again, for most people, they might be having imbalances one side. So that's why I like focusing more on my left, like keeping that tight, because it will naturally just try to fatigue quickly. So again, you can see I'm not really using too much grip, keeping that tight, especially with the pipe. I can actually practice wrapping the bar around me and learning how to push through the floor, keeping that tightness, keeping the chest up, and meeting that point. And that <laughs> proper on, proper firing. Dun, dun, dun. Boom, boom. Again. Ooh. So again, what, why I'm sort of popping my hips at the top is where when I'm trying to extend to drive the bar up, that's where the bar is going to meet to, to drive up. Wait. 
So that's me done. So what I'm going to do now, move straight on to the snatches, shoes on. As mentioned to you before on the last video or the video of me working out before is obviously my ankles are my limiting factor. So any way that I can improve my ankles going over my toes, dorsiflexion, um, it's going to really help with my lift not really make sure that I'm shifting wrongly. So what we've got here is there, take my keys out. There we go. Again, another factor is uh, the, the shoes. I, uh, you'll probably notice that some shoes are quite narrow and they quite get quite tight. Hence why I don't really open uh, tie up my shoelaces anymore because I like the wide box, wide toe shoes, uh, Vivo barefoot. I'm not trying to promote anything. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is just get into the grip, snatch grip position, and then just start to drill myself. Just drilling myself, make, making sure that reps look pretty much the same. And then add in the load because when we set the timer, it will be 10 reps, 10 sets of three reps, 10 sets of three reps. Um, and then on the rest time, I'm going to be doing pull ups just to make sure. Uh, I'm getting more, more work done in the time and again it, again doing the superset fashion if you have the energy is a very useful tool to save time and clutter everything together but cluttering sounds a bit like of a bad word but i mean i can bring everything together without trying to say i've got to do this and then do this do this so we're just going to drill again I think I'm going to be doing 60 again. So. About nice. So just quickly add, I don't want to be because I just know that with Olympic weightlifting for me, I know it requires a lot of drilling and skill and practice rather than focusing on how much weight can I lift. And I know I have the, the baseline strength. It's just now making sure that the, the skill and the feel overall movement is in. So, that's in, we need the timer. But if we don't have a timer, then I might have to guesswork this one. If there's a, got the stopwatch up here, but no stopwatch. Okay, don't think we've got anything. So, it's not the be all and end all. Luckily, we have our watches or our, uh, our own phones. So, again, I'm going to be aiming for, takes me about 30 to 40 seconds to do three reps. And then with that minute, um, minute rest, I'm going to be doing two, two reps of pull-ups, really trying to hit my chest to the bar. Okay, let's crack on. So that will be roughly 15 minutes, I need to do 10 rounds in. We'll go 16 just to play safe. Right, pop that down. We're good to go. Again, uh, I'm sure the uh, video edit will put music on, but here we go. Real work begins.
So now we've got a good rest. So even though the skill looks pretty decent, I'm not gonna try and add weight because for the last six to eight weeks, I've been really, really just been consistent on this weight. I've got a five here just in case, but I might add it towards the end. So this, this workout ain't as taxing as the last one where I was doing cleaning jerks. That really requires a lot of drive, a lot of power. This one, again, similar power, but the load is not uh, submaximal. It's submaximal, but it's not close to the end point. So here we go. Oh. Oh. Round two. I better keep a track on these because I don't want to forget them. Round two. Stand up tall. Ah. Oh, too early. Oh. Oh. oh, the rate is just right, mate. Oh.
Oh. Hi. Wow. Ah, too early. Oh, I was thinking. Push, push for the feet. Ah. So what I'm thinking about here is just really how to maintain strong back, thoracic extension, really using the legs to push the floor, push away, keeping my chest up over the bar or shoulders just over the bar. I'm really trying to use the leg drive to take the bar up. So when I know, I know the difference when I don't do it. So it can be quite frustrating. It just means I'm trying to rush. Scott, I need to be a bit more patient. There we go, nice. Liquid chalk, one thing you got. <laughs> Most CrossFit e places will have. So make sure the grips not loosening out, no sweat. <sighs> Ooh. The one thing I don't want to forget is logging how many sets I've done because it can be a bit of a pain. Cada member, four left. So I said my goal was to do a snatch of 80 kg. Now, again, people can improve their lifts as fast, well, at a good rate if they spend a lot of their training focusing on that lift. 
me, I don't spend most of my training focusing on that lift, so I can just, I know the gradual process of just allowing up to 12 months, especially with the shoulder, to, to develop and uh, hopefully then things will improve at the rate that I think it should. It's all about knowing the goals and being realistic with the time frame. So you're probably thinking, why only two reps on there? But believe me, when I first injured this shoulder, I could even hang on the bar. So to see those little incremental sort of progress hanging, so I'm scared to even hang with one arm. These are the little things that I'm not really trying to rush or force an injury or beat myself up. is it felt pretty good why not just try and add this in just add the five Okay, this is the last rep, last set, sorry. Oh. Oh. Is the mic on, yeah? Good. Uh -huh. Really want to work on this last set through the patience, even though my legs are tired.
Oh, thought I'd add in one more. Right, 10 rounds. That's out of the way. Okay, so next we're gonna go into deadlifts and dips, ring dips. Uh, obviously I'm getting better with the ring dips, but now it's more of a case of trying to really feel that when I'm locking out and I, instead of me just doing or what most people think is the dips, I really want to try and lock out, extend this chest, especially on the left side. And I start to feel my lats really going. Again, really improve most of the lifts that I'm trying to do as well. So, right, let's crack into that then. So, we're going to ramp up on the deadlifts on about 130. I don't want to kill myself so much. So we've got 70, 80, 90. Almost bang on. Make sure the right weight is on. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. Hundred. And ten. And twenty. Five more. So again, this, this workout now is one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, and then repeat for three rounds, that same sequence. Ideally, the goal is not to rest at all and push through. I remember last, last session I did this, I had a client to do a Zoom call with. Ugh. So I managed to complete it all, but at the same time, there was that little bit of uh, pausing before the call. So hopefully today, based on, hopefully there's improvements, we're gonna be doing So this should take even probably quicker than what usually it takes. So, so it's just one, one, two, two, three, three. Let's go.
Whew. Ah! Ah. <gasps> wow. Ah. Got to repeat that process again. Two rounds. Not easy. I don't like to have no rest. The mindset thing.
<sighs> Food's coming up. <laughs> so I have eggs, five eggs, two pieces of bread, and then a quarter of a watermelon for breakfast. Keep it moving. So we have to keep thinking. Keep it moving. And honestly, this is how you get leaner by pushing hard, getting stronger. And this is what I mean, getting stronger. Probably the most fundamental thing. Save me off the job. This definitely has to be on standby because the sweat is running down my arm and my hands. you know it's not easy Oh! Oh! Where the mind's saying, fucking, why are you doing it, mate? Why don't you stop? Oh. 
My core's on fire. You know when things are bad when your food's coming up. Ah. Oh, little break. Last round. Always said on the last video, you maybe want that banana sweet energy kick in between mid sesh. They call that intra intra meal or middle of the workout meal. I'm not really a fan of all that because uh, yeah, I'd, obviously I just like to say like you know. You don't want to be adding to your budget on what, what is going to get you a best workout unless your budget ain't no limit. But then, what sort of progress are you really truly looking for? Minute, minute progress by going by that, just by taking an extra supplement makes you feel more energized for about five minutes. You know, maybe, maybe it will help, maybe it doesn't. But again, it's about, I look at it like, the more people keep saying, you must take this, 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 it's a never ending when is enough. So that's why I've, I just focus on good staple food. I've really cut down on protein powders as well. I don't even have one to be honest here. Just on the back sense that they just don't sit right with me. Uh, I feel less bloated regardless of the quality of the protein in protein powder. Okay, let's go. Last round. Oh. 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 I'm gonna use this t-shirt to wipe. Oh, I can't, that's all I want. Oh.
I'll do this three and three and pass halfway. Oh! Oh, wow. Happy need a drink. Oh, have a quick sit. Oh, we're almost there. Wow, almost there. Another break. Whew. One more to that. Trying to think of 
when I'm trying to cross the finish line that I'm not dragging my feet. I'm finishing strong. I'll make sure I do it as if it was my first rep. Get a little bit of a breather. Just relax the body. Hi. Oh. Now, I might have said I need a workout. That. I'm going to speak slowly so I can get my breath. That. I want to set a time limit to do certain things. Now, if you're over the time limit and you think it's a new, it's, it's because you've started a workout make something new give yourself two three sessions so i was saying yes just play with the weights make sure the weights are set set intensity for you and obviously you'll see that i'm lifting weight as you might think i'm lifting heavy weights but it's just heavy weights based on my ability so if you you can still do the same workout but just set it to your own standard so you can't do ring di ring dips you can do actual uh body weight dips um different variety so again just shoot me a question if you need, need uh, some guidance um, so the final part is I don't think I got energy for this part is the snatches oh. 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 so I got a pair of 12 well one pet 112 116 uh, now, I would do this on a time limit, but because the clock's not working and my phone ain't going to be ideal for it. Uh, so I'm just going to be aiming for reps and because I've been absolutely blown out by this workout it will just be I'm going to be doing aiming for 100 reps each arm so if I feel tired on the 16s I'll drop down to the uh, 12s I'm just going to check see if this client's calling one sec could be important. Oh. So, again, snatches are for people that find it quite challenging to do. Something you might want to learn to just do because it's a fantastic exercise to get a lot of work done in a short amount of time. But today, well, I'm not. Honestly, that has killed me, that workout. Whew. So, 100 snatches each hand. I can alternate. I'm going to try and do 10 each side. Nine. 
10. One. Two. Three. Four. Eight, nine, ten. Just going at a good pace because I'm fucking dead. So dead. Sometimes it's just like that on a workout. And that's the thing. I don't want you to always think that uh, things should be plain sailing. You want to know that you've pushed hard in the main part of the workout. So the last part should be lighter, but just as challenging as if it's not. There's a lot of conditioning work that needs to be done to add into your workout. get a drink. It's one of them days. It's one of them days. I need sugar. That's what I need. Oh. Oh. Oh, mini rest. I need it. Oh. Oh. This is a bit where your body is giving up, and like I can ease. 
my brain's going, oh, I'll just do 50. Just do 50. But I want them people that, oh, oh, I don't like follow, I don't like finding an easy way out. The brain will try and find the easiest way out, but probably tell all the sweat that's on me as well. That fluid I've lost. That's why I need that drink. A little rest. Oh. <sighs> Look at gold. Now you're probably thinking, oh, that looks quite challenging. I need to be doing that consistently without dropping it for the whole hundred. So that will give you an understanding of where where that should be. And I, I know that's conditioning in itself where one side is working, the other is not. And it's like you're splitting your body in half, but it's still the heart's still ticking. So honestly, one incredible workout that is if you have the patience and the the, the discipline to say that you want to just stick to learning that the thing is again when things are getting hard or hard to master the skill or hard to do the exercises we're always fishing and looking for that easy way out remember i've done it many times and typically people are the most common people is they know a workout's going to be challenging so they don't bother turning up. They're gonna make some excuse.
Right, that's me done. I think that's 70. That's enough, 140. Something I can work on. I'm not here to kill myself on that last bit. But, <sighs> hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to make sure you can see the kind of intensity, the focus, and discipline that goes into the training. And there's pretty much, far, far than, other than catching my breath, it's all systems go. And, but, so to explain about what the snatches do, uh, it's not an arm exercise, it's a shoulder stability exercise with posterior chain. When you've got the butt, when you've got it above your head like this, your scapula, your shoulder blade, you're just trying to stabilize while you're extending in the, in your arm in the air. So you're not trying to press it at all. You're using your hips and catching the momentum to pierce your arm through. So something that you should pay attention to if you are trying to do it. So um, yeah, hope you liked the video. Uh, again, snatches are something that I'm really trying to especially mastering the kettlebells over these 12 months is something I really want to try and master. And hopefully in the future, if you see me in the future, this is, you kind of think, oh, I was bad at this point and I'm never going to get better. It's that consistency, the patience, the discipline, asking people that are better knowledgeable than you is what is important. Because again, if it's just about me building muscle, I'm pretty good at that. I can do that all day long. But learning skills and really trying to enjoy training is something that I think a lot of people uh, need to have, but with a purpose of an outcome. So if your purpose is uh, fat loss, there's many, many ways to skin a cat. And most likely through fat loss, it's about the food that you put in your mouth. Um, so if you look at my physique gut and going, ah, oh, this is the workout that gets that body, I'm not going to lie to you on me and say that that's the case because it's not because I've had a, if you've known me a while I've had a body where I've been doing bodybuilding football all these things it's just about making sure that the food that you consume on a daily basis uh, doesn't go over your calorie, calorie output your needs for the day so remember that all right remember if you want to like subscribe share again I'm not after the money because we don't get monetized in Prune 9. So, yeah, peace out.